All right, let's now get you the latest in Beyond World is One's continuing coverage of the conflict between Turkey and the Kurdish forces in northeastern Syria. Now, as expected, the issue has dominated discourse during the NATO's defense minister's meeting in Brussels. The alliance has slammed the military operation by Turkey, but has stopped short of meting out any punishment. Remember, Turkey is a part of NATO. Now, NATO's General Secretary, General Jens Stoltenberg, has also voiced his concerns of many experts who have predicted that the operation might spark a resurgence of the so-called Islamic State. As I have stated several times that I am concerned about the risk uh, uh, that uh, the increased violence, the fighting, the instability we have seen uh, can uh, lead to that uh, ISIS fighters uh, who are in prison are able to escape or uh, are set free. And that's uh, exactly the reason why I think it's so important that we have seen some progress over the last days with reduced fighting, with uh, some reduction in uh, tensions. So uh, that uh, reduces the risk of uh, uh, ISIS fighters being uh, set uh, free. And also at the NATO summit, an unlikely deal maker emerged in the form of Germany. Now, Germany's defense minister, Annegret Kramp Karen Bauer, has proposed the creation of a security zone in northern Syria and has said that all members of the international community must partake in this process. The proposal has been welcomed by Turkey, the United States, and also the top commander of the Kurdish military forces. The United States, however, wants Europe to take the lead in implementing the proposal. The Pentagon, meanwhile, seems extremely concerned about a possible obstruction to the oil supply from Syria and so is planning to send additional military assets in an effort to protect the oil fields there. Now, the United Nations Security Council also met behind closed doors to discuss the situation in Syria and reports indicate that there was a pretty heated exchange between the Turkish and the Syrian ambassadors. Now, Turkey apparently has called the operation as a counter-terror operation, while Syria has condemned it in categoric terms. After the creation of a safe zone at the Syrian border, most of the Kurdish forces have withdrawn from the area, and these territories have now been taken over by Turkey-backed Syrian rebels. One example of this is the city of Ras al Ain, which is on your screens now. All right, let's now shift our attention to what is happening in California, where emergency officials have ordered for hundreds of people to evacuate as a wildfire in the northern region continues to spread. The fire, termed as the Kincaid Blaze, had started on Wednesday near the Geysers, the world's largest geothermal field, with nearly about two dozen power plants drawing steam from more than 350 mountain wells in the area to create electricity. Now, driven by strong winds and held by the extremely dry conditions, the wildfire has now engulfed an area of almost about 10,000 acres. Almost about 900 residents of the Gizaville town have been forced to evacuate as the fire has grown in its intensity. Firefighters have been battling hard to contain the place. Planes have also been deployed to assist in the operations. The fire turned out to be fueled by uh, what we believe to be about, about 60 mile an hour winds, plus or minus, and the terrain up there in that area is really rugged. Throughout the night, the fire continued to push wind driven down toward the community of Geyserville. The many power plants, including the Pacific Gas and Electricity Cooperation, have suspended their operations as a preventive measure. Officials have said that the fire is burning at an alarming rate and could continue for some days as the winds persist to blow at high speeds of almost about 70 miles per hour. The Californian governor, Gavin Newsom, has also expressed concerns about the situation and has said that the state is taking all kinds of precautionary measures.